So one has really said very good lines that if you want the leadership or authority, you have to become an author. And that's very true. If we see in the history also, people who have written books, they have written something, they are perceived as authors or they are perceived as they're having some authority. Hi, my name is Alok Alok Joshi, the student of public speaking and human behavior. And today why I'm talking about the authors, authorities, leadership, because I have got one very special guest today who has just become an author. And to give you the fact that nobody becomes, just becomes an author because he or she has to prepare a lot of things. He or she might be thinking, might have been thinking the same thought on which they want to write a book or write a literature from years together. They might be thinking of something and then there is a time, the perfect time, the right time that they thought, yes, now I should pin down my idea and I should write something. So in front of us today, a very beautiful author, Dr. Subra Mukherjee. Hello, Subra. Welcome you to this show, Alok Joshi Talk to Rock. Hello, sir. Thank you for inviting me once again. And I'm so honored and privileged to be sharing the screen with you on this show. So thank you so much for inviting me. And I also feel honored because this is the first interviewer I'm interviewing an author, <laughs> the complete author. So that's how, because when I interviewed earlier, you were the author in making. Yeah. And yeah. now you are, you are literally an author today. Yes, yes, yes. So the invisible yoke, see how beautiful is the title, the invisible yoke. That is the title of Subra's latest book. And this is Amazon's best selling book nowadays if you go and watch on amazon you will find that invisible yoke is in the best selling category so congratulations for that also subra thank you thank you so much so let's start subra because last time when we had uh, our interaction you elucidated and enunciated about uh, your past your how you were not in a position to even think that you would complete your education, you would go for the doctorate or anything that you think like today, it's a miracle for you. But you completed each and everything. So it really intrigues me. You wrote a book on women, right? Their yeah. stories, the women, uh, seven different stories regarding women, their struggles, their life in particular. So I was thinking because now you are so successful, you have achieved almost each and every academic criteria which you ever wanted. And I, I was thinking like you would write a book on your technical things because you are a startup entrepreneur, you would write something on startup, but you wrote something on women. So what inspired you to write your first book on women? Okay. So First of all, thank you for this interesting question. And yeah, there actually it was like a journey for me to become an author. I always wanted to write a book or books maybe. This was something like a dream for me ever since childhood because I was very much interested in reading books right from the age of eight or nine years maybe if I remember correctly. Okay. But Yes, there are plans to write other genres and other things. But the first book I wanted to be something centered around women, some, something by a woman, for the women, and not just for the women, of course, for everyone. But even in the dedication page, if you say it's written dedicated to all the women who dare yeah. to dream. Yeah. So I have been brought up by a very strong woman, my mother. <laughs> And maybe somehow that has given me the strength to face the hardships and struggles that life has uh, given to me, served to me. And in spite of all that, as you say that, yes, today I am at least satisfied with whatever I'm doing. I'm contented. And yes, there are certain things in my life today, which was barely a dream for me several years back. So when I thought about writing the first book, I thought that it should be about some real issues that the women face and not just women, anybody, the real issues. And 
the moment i thought about that it uh, it might sound little um, unrealistic to you but actually the title of the book came before the stories the title okay. of the book was decided i think i thought that if i ever write a book this should be the title the invisible yo okay so i played around a little bit and i think 2018 or 19 i wrote in one my vision board that the okay. story title will be the invisible yo now whether it will be a novel or short stories that was not there in the mind though i was okay. pending down from here and there yeah so the reason is that every day in our life if you see that uh, when i say yolk it's just a metaphor that metaphor that i have used that we all feel strangled by an invisible yolk around us if you say we always think okay what might this person think about us or there are certain societal norms some challenges so all that things that are going in the society somehow what we do is we try to create and especially if it's women right. women they have a tendency and because the way we are brought up because the way society uh, you know hardwires things into our brain we think that okay this is the way to be and so we slowly create a yoke around us and then we forget to live the life we deserve or desire right and that was something i really wanted to touch upon but then at the same time i thought that if i really want to reach a lot of people i should tell it in the form of stories not just as a direct uh you know fiction type yes i mean non fiction type i mean sorry so non fiction i i thought no non fiction i'll write later let me write it craft it in the form of beautiful stories and i should connect it with what the women in each and every area of life how do they go through okay. if you see in the stories there are women from yeah. all strata of all ages and what they are going through in their day to day life from there only how they face the challenges and how they are trying to identify their inner yokes so that okay. was a thing and i thought i should go with this you know and once the title was decided and then i thought no i'll go with short stories i thought it has to be dedicated to women and yeah that was the idea okay so but how come the analogy of uh, the invisible yoke and women's struggle Uh, why did you think about this particular title what was the thought behind this title as such <laughs> well, means the yoke and the struggle so how come this analogy matches in your mind means how come you perceive that and i think this is the real principle of law of attraction that anybody can if somebody can perceive something the mind can achieve it right what the <laughs> alan alan james says or the Uh, the book as a man think it also says yeah, yeah. so you perceived it and you achieved it but yes. this analogy of a yoke and the struggle of the women uh, how is this uh, interconnected or how did you fix that one in one piece <laughs> yeah uh, so what i thought was uh, let me it did not come out like one particular moment and a bulb light nothing of that sort it was yeah. a process or a journey rather from uh, you know the a title to the stories and the different stories and it all crafted and uh, by god's grace it everything blended well together when it finally came out as a product in the form of a book right but the metaphor that i have used here the invisible yoke what i meant or what i tried to tell the people was that we all especially women we try to create by yoke i mean that you know cross piece that generally we Uh, put across the bullocks mm. when they, you know, for the cart and also yes. all that. So we think actually we don't have any yoke around our necks, right? Yeah. We are free. We are human beings. I mean, we are blessed to be born as human beings on this planet. Irrespective of that, what we do is we imagine that something is always stopping us from what we want to do. Mm. Sometimes it could be, you know, you trying to please someone. Sometimes it could be your fear. to do something new sometimes it could be the society telling you that okay as a girl you have this 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 responsibilities and so you should not dream or you should not uh, you know have too much high ambitions right. sometimes it is just a mere fear within us that we you know keep all our desires inside and we say no we say no we i mean we even fail to express ourselves in front of others mm. forget about others sometimes we are not true to ourselves so i thought that even if i forget about women but as human beings also if you see today 
we all have created yokes around our necks but those yokes are not seen to us yes okay we seem tend to be free but we have all created yoke around our neck and we have imprisoned yeah imprisoned will be the perfect word we have imprisoned ourselves to an extent that we are not living the life we desire and deserve and women particularly face this more if you see yeah okay and it's not just about a particular strata but it's everywhere so women still face this more so i thought no i should you know that uh, when i thought about a title i thought this is the most appropriate title the invisible yoke because it's just everywhere even suppose i as an author i was so scared initially how will the people respond to me as a debut author should i directly write about women and there are points which some people may like some people may not like so see this thinking this thinking is also yoke yes. which is stopping me which was stopping me for a long time to release my book even after writing so right. we all have that yoke but i thought that yes i should uh, dedicate it this to the women and that's why i went with just stories which mainly revolves around the women and their life their struggles and their breakthrough moments and all that absolutely and this reminds me of the story or it's a real fact like how uh, an elephant is slaved for a life right when the elephant is uh, quite little as a little one and then he is bound with that uh, very say very feeble row and then because he is not able to or or that shackle sorry i forgot that he is bound with the shackle because everybody knows that he will try hard it will try hard to break that shackle so if the shackle is are so hard but when it becomes really big one they are bounded just by the normal ropes and at that time they did not have the courage even to break those feeble ropes so this is how the society becomes an especially yes what you said it's very true for women it's really very difficult even nowadays even when women are so free to do several things still there is something going in their mind which may hinder them from achieving their peak potential so it's it's very true so can you just give us a brief insight from each stories one or two liners only so that it will generate more interest in people once they listen to this uh, interview so it will generate more interest okay. just come come up to the uh, suspense and then leave it <laughs> one or two liners only in, in each story yeah actually uh, the book consists of uh, seven stories let me tell you a secret here which i did not reveal till now the book originally consisted of 19 stories i had the 19 stories ready 19 yeah okay. but i said i had a yoke in myself i also had my own part of yoke which was stopping me from should i release should i not okay. so that thinking was there then i thought okay let me just cut down the length and go with just seven stories and you know in the next series in a uh, i mean there will be a series to it yeah. so in the next after few months i will bring out the next uh, the rest of the story so out of 90 i you know removed the other stories and kept just seven seven of okay. them out of which two were really all are my favorite but two were really very favorite to me so right now it's a collection of seven short stories very short stories and the first story if you see it's called as revelation whereas the last story is genesis okay so uh, you understand if you see the meaning the first story is revelation i mean there's yes. something like a end kind of yes. thing and the last story is genesis the beginning genesis, the beginning <laughs> so okay The first story is about a confused teenager girl who finds so much of difficulty in doing each and every chores like you know a simple thing like filling up an application form for the metric exam the 10th board even she finds difficult in that also besides she has a set of parents who are always trying to mend her because she is confused so trying to mend her at the same time this confused little teenager girl she also thinks that she is not very beautiful and she there's a mm. line like you know chubby cheeks dimple chin yes so that it's in the nursery rhyme book but she feels that she is not a chubby cheek girl or she does not have very rosy lips but her lips okay. are rather burned by an accident so she thinks she is in a complete turmoil all the time at the same time 
there is a turmoil going inside with her parents also which she is unaware and then there comes a situation where we think that it's almost going to break down between the parents and the child but that is a revelation something one night after a lot of struggle in the school with her application filling process suddenly in one night the girl and her relationship with her parents everything changes she hears something that her parents are having a private conversation and she you know hears that that also through the window peeping through the window so what she hears and how that her parents also had their own yokes there was some yoke between the parents between the mom and dad and she had her own yokes so that night all the yokes are broken so what happens that for that you have to read the book <laughs> <laughs> and I that's only I, that's only I want that's only i want you should yeah, I, I was about, yeah. yes yeah the last story is about you know genesis beginning it's about a bride a typical indian bride who is all you know with makeup and she's sitting on the throne she thinks of herself as sitting on the throne on that you know platform where yeah. people are coming clicking photographs with her and suddenly she sees that for the first time in my life i'm getting so much of attention and people are saying oh my god you're beautiful so she gets confused these are the same people who told her that you are ugly yeah these are the same these were the same people who told her don't wear orange don't wear green color you look because she she was dusky her complexion was dusky yeah. so these people did not allow her to wear bright color clothes some of her relatives there were other people would were always making her feel that she was not beautiful and now suddenly she feels all are giving her attention then she sees a selfie of herself with one of her friend and then she realizes oh my god the makeup artist has turned her into something else and she yeah. starts enjoying that process but gradually she understands that these are all illusions mm. and it's not going to last for long but then there's also a part where her life partner because it's a arranged marriage setting so the person whom she is getting married to she has seen him like only for once or twice face to face and rest it was just zoom calls or you know yeah. meetings and she says that now it is smartphones also make you look good so she was worried what will happen once her makeup is out but yeah. then there is a beautiful ending to the story the relationship between husband and wife how it i mean the the first night of their marriage how it transforms and there is also a very sad incident that happened just when they are sitting near that um fire in hindu marriages we have that fire and you know yes. yagya and all so just near the yagya there is something that happens and that one again breaks her confidence a moment before she was feeling very confident with her beautiful looks and people were congratulating her saying that you are so beautiful and then again it breaks her confidence on that place in the mandap but again after that something happens and then she thinks she understands that it's all her inner yokes of about the definition of beauty what the world says is different but how she feels from within that's also important so yes. there's something that happens and again for that you have to read the book <laughs> absolutely absolutely so when you were just narrating this book and recounting it so i was just going through in my mind although the book says a lot about women but i suppose these yokes are borne by each and everybody of us absolutely absolutely we all think that we cannot achieve our peak potential we are bound with something else which is not visible but we are following it religiously right just like you said you, the girl is thinking that she is not beautiful at all because people have imposed their ideas on her and she started thinking the same way so we all have these yokes around us and somebody is required over there some situations are required so that we can break that bondage and yes. free ourselves from those invisible yokes and live our life to the fullest yeah absolutely and uh, there is another story co called i mean most of uh, i have been getting uh, like messages uh, in my inbox and people have contacted me personally also particularly a story called coat okay c o a t a yeah. Okay. and the entire story revolves around this pro, uh, this phrase cut your coat according to your cloth okay you know? yes so we, we we all know it's a very famous proverb yes 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 you should cut your coat according to according the cloth to you have yeah yeah 
So now this is a relationship between a mother, a single mother, and a very young kid. The young kid has no idea what is going on in the mother's life, how hard the mother is struggling, and this one proverb changes their life. So what happens? The mother is alone, and even the mother thinks that being a single mother, how will she manage her child's mm-hmm. education and everything? At the same time, the child is completely unaware. So this is the narrative by the child that what her mother is doing to make her. a study in a very good school and how the mother is struggling but at the end the mother daughter relationship is beautiful and how the mother gets the answer from this unaware kid and this proverb itself they completely change the meaning of the proverb that do you really need to cut your coat according to the cloth or is it just a society who tells you to cut your coat according to the cloth okay. so this is yeah this is again another one and this is one of my favorite stories too the quote and people have really loved the story so much that even i read it <laughs> three to four times after the book was released that okay did i really yes. write so well i read it so yeah and you are cor- correct that we all have our yokes and sometimes either a second person or sometimes we ourselves we have some defining moments in our life mm. that we set ourselves free from the yoke some defining moments or something happens and then we see okay this is the bigger picture and i was just you know holding on to this for no reason something like that yeah yeah so exactly what what you told actually you told us three stories out of your <laughs> this beautiful book and this is intriguing me to write, read the full book as such and i would definitely be doing that now coming to your journey of uh, authorship eh? how much did it take to think about all the material thinking about becoming an author and then actually sitting down for your actual work and writing the book how much time did it take for you to write the book okay <laughs> i wanted to be- as i already told i always wanted to become an author but you know writing down sitting down and writing that time or that um, somehow it did not happen actually mm. though the title was there with me for long time in fact i disclosed the title to two of my colleagues also that you know i'm going to write a book on this title but the stories were not in place somehow it was all here and there written in my diaries here some half written drafts and all that right finally last year i thought especially during the pandemic and i also call it that this pandemic has been like a pilgrimage for me so much of understanding about life and so many things has happened for the good of course and so i thought no i should uh, you know start working on this last year december i thought i should at least sit down and plan out what i want to do and as you know that i am a mind mapper yeah. so you know i mind map i mapped my entire book that okay this the 19 stories initially i thought it would be 19 stories so i mapped out all the 19 stories and you know who will at least the essence that in each of the cases what will be the yokes i did yeah. not decide the entire story or the plot but i thought the yokes right. this is the yoke number 1 yoke number 2 that in each of the stories one one yoke will be broken or right. you know the women will set themselves free so that i decided slowly last year december january and then this year i gave some time to myself that no i should write at least life is going to take its you know pace and it will keep on moving and all things will happen but because this is a dream and i think i should take this journey forward of authorship and then actually within from january or december last year december by this year may i think i finished actually two books okay. the invisible yoke and the other one which is due this month it will be released this month right. so <laughs> i wrote both both the books and yeah but it took a lot of time because though both the books deal with real issue i one was completely with you know that there also the stories with mind mapping and all that but this one was completely a fiction a narrative mm. one but dealing with real issues so that yes. was a challenge and i wanted to keep it really short and precise so that you know many people read and understand even someone who have no uh, habit of reading a book they would easily catch the language very simple language so i did not take too much of time to take make the language very extraordinarily difficult or something i wanted right. it to i in fact i tried and that was a challenge also i tried to remove all the phrases and not too many metaphors not too many unnecessary things that will you know create a yoke that okay this yes, is a tough book yes. and we will not read again it will be one one more yoke for the readers yeah right. so i should not create a yoke for the readers so i thought 
even if it's the first book and i love literary uh, you know work where you know there's a lot of understanding in depth knowledge about the writing style and all because i read jhumpa lahri i read ruskin yes. bond and they are my you know role models so of course i want to write in that direction some day but i thought as a first book i should make it plain very simple and yes by may it was done by i think yeah by may it was done even the final draft i read it for 20 times or something like that and i thought no both the books were i mean this one should be the first one because it's based on women and the other yeah. one i just delayed the process a little bit it will be coming out this month yes great so you are not just an author of one book you are the <laughs> author of books now so very soon uh, you, you will definitely be called as author of books yeah so, and uh, even the uh, <laughs> remaining story it's only seven here the yeah. remaining ones are there once i think that the a lot of people read this sure. I'm, i'm definitely getting good response i'll release the second half of this the stories are already written okay they just need to be crafted properly and where will be released yeah. great 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 so uh, as it is said uh, behind a successful man there is always a woman <laughs> right so should i call it behind a successful woman there is always a man yeah i mean there is <laughs> uh, you can say that behind every successful person there is a host of other people not just yes. a man or a woman no, i am especially talking about your husband ah yeah perfectly <laughs> yeah because you know this support i have written here also that you yes. know in this book i dedicate and without four person that is the three strong ladies of my life my mom and my two sisters yeah and he was one person my husband he was one person who was like likho you have to complete don't you know he was someone who was relentlessly without even thinking that i might feel bad at sometimes are why are you pressurizing me so much mm. at times i felt like no once you start something you have to be a finisher you just cannot keep things waiting like that people are there to read your stories people will learn something from it and if nothing else you need to express your ideas and thoughts and even he loves poetry he writes poetry so <laughs> so he was very much intriguing and he wanted me to you know publish this and i think his role was very vital because during the pandemic we all know that how things have been and all that we are not allowed to go out of home and irrespective of all that having that mindset to write and publish a book is difficult and without the support of a person it's really difficult so yes uh, if there has to be a man it is him yeah i would say definitely sir <laughs> you perfectly framed it yeah so convey my regards and all the viewers regards also to him yeah, sure, sure, right sure. so i have i have written it here also that without his support this would be not possible at all yeah. <laughs> right so and all the best to you for your second book and coming more and more books and some day also write something for men oh no <laughs> no, no, no. no actually i thought so that we all have yokes yeah. we all have yokes not just women and yeah. yeah and this book also i i wrote it in the starting also that this is a book not just for women but all those born of a woman yes for all Absolutely. those born of the women because we all need to understand that why this yokes can stop us from living the life we desire and deserve so right. these are the yokes we need to you know break it and live our life absolutely and because i i feel many of the people on this earth they just forget that there is always a link a link you you cannot separate a woman from a man yeah right so there is always a link while performing some atrocities or pressurizing mentally physically to a woman they always forget that there is always a link there is always a link which cannot be broken at all even if they think of doing that yeah so absolutely. they are always bound to it and they have to respect although yes we always say that you have to respect the women you have to respect the women no you have to respect each other yes because yeah, women yeah. are most yeah. neglected till the yeah. time women have been most neglected that's why we say more often for women but we have to respect each other uh, equally so Absolutely. that so that everybody each and every one perform its best his or her best so that the world becomes the better place for each and everybody absolutely so all the best 
for your any anything else you would like to convey to our uh, no i would just say that you know you have said it perfectly that we need to respect that's my idea also that you know why we say respect your sister mother or brother or father i mean we as a human being we have a personality and we should respect each other as human beings right you know we are human beings and being a male or a female is just a part of the biology and that's it we are all human beings we need to understand we have to have empathy towards each other we need to respect each other and once that is done rest all the things will fall in place once that is understood so you know that is even beyond what you said is absolutely correct that yes we understand that we have to respect this that that is okay but yeah respect the other person as a human being and that's sufficient actually that's sufficient absolutely because i learned it very hard way and it's it's my personal experience i learned it very hard way that's why i know the value of respecting each other uh, it's it's a huge enjoyment in respecting each other the way you receive the respect when you respect somebody that's phenomenal means you you can't compare it with anything else even with the money you receive it, it cannot be comparable at all so that's how we need to respect each other so thank you very much for coming on this show alok joshi talk to rock and i'm really honored because this is my first interview where i'm interviewing an author and the author who is the best selling author on amazon so that is icing on the cake so that's why i'm very much happy so viewers who are watching or who will be watching us uh, later on this is the in the center which you are seeing the book the invisible yoga that is written by dr subra mukherjee and very soon you will be watching one more book the book launch of dr subra mukherjee so with that thank you very much doctor for coming uh, with us and taking time out of your busy schedule on and helping us to know more about your book and your particular idea thank so you. thank you so much we wish you a great success with this book and coming more and more books thank you thank you so much absolute pleasure to be on your show thanks a lot so everybody who is watching there my name is alok alok joshi watching is smiling over there we'll meet again with the same smile thank you very much